In this video I will look at various aspects of measurements of Allen deviation. With this unit it's the tiny PFA and also with lean rod and my two channel receiver there. So here I have two rubidium oscillators the LPRO 101 this is one of them and here is the other one and they are fed into the tiny PFA and I'm using a time lab to evaluate uh, when these two are run as the two signal inputs to that unit. Here is the Allen deviation plot and the measurement time is 8 days and 22 hours more than a week so I have reasonably accurate results up to 10,000 seconds and even 100,000 seconds the error limits are reasonably small. Now this is Allen variation and it's interesting to compare that to the Hadamard deviation and as you can see there is a significant difference out here. I go back to the Allen again. So Allen deviation measures uh, long time frequency drift while the Hadamard looks at more the variations up and down while the linear frequency drift is not affecting the Hadamard. It is uh, interesting to look at the frequency difference the frequency difference between these two oscillators because that is what is used to produce this Allen deviation curve and it looks like this means I cannot see anything without zooming into the track so I do it like this and here it is very obvious why there is a difference between Allen deviation and Hadamard because there is a linear frequency drift here. Then I pulled down the curtain here to prevent the sun from reaching the equipment and whether the sunshine was affecting the tiny PFA or cables or attenuators or the radidium oscillators I don't know but something is affected. By editing the colors I can make the trace visible and get rid of the blue background. Now uh, while doing that uh, the time information disappears up here so I close this after having selected this a little bit brighter blue and then I can look at the first peak here it says 9 hours or 8 hours 50 minutes 9 hours 2 minutes about so the next peak is 1 day uh, 9 hours and the next peak is 2 days 9 hours so it is the sun looking into my, my room and the system I have here here is Allen deviation again. I can compare it with modified Allen deviation. Uh, the difference is that there is a filter on the signal removing noise close to the carrier and it doesn't make much difference. Here is a measurement by KE5FX which you can find on the internet and he has measured the LPRO 101 with the HP5065 and I think that is better uh, than uh, the LPRO so we would see here is the performance of one of those units at 1000 seconds it is about uh, 2, 3, 3 and a half times 10 to minus 13 and what I have seen at 1000 seconds is a little bit more it is 7 times 
10 to minus 13. But that is the contribution from two units. And uh, presumably they are uncorrelated, so they should add with the square law. So I should divide by 1.4 this result I have. And it's not too far from what Ke5fx has found. But I have measured, so I can see also 100,000 seconds, and I see that constant linear shift in frequency, in frequency difference between the two units. And to the extent that the two units are drifting in the same direction, uh, I don't know, or if they are drifting in opposite directions. So the result is not really of any value, except that I can say I don't see any significant noise uh, that goes up after 10,000 seconds. This is my two-channel direct conversion receiver, and here are the local oscillators. This one is the master oscillator, and this second one is face-locked to the master with a fairly large time constant, although the smallest I can have on this system. I am feeding the two signals that are usually sent to my SDR eyepiece into the two inputs of the tiny PFA. This means that the frequencies in the long run have to be the same. So the average of the frequency difference has to be zero uh, when averaged over a long time. Then I'm running lean rod in the usual fashion with these two oscillators as local oscillators and this third oscillator as the signal. So what I see here is the performance is different for these oscillators. The green trace channel 1 is a little bit better than channel 2. And I get Allen variation, and the yellow trace is the correlation between the channels. It takes a very long time before that uh, stabilizes. Here is the frequency versus time graph, and it's out of scale. I can go here and click on the star. Then you can see channel 1 and channel 2. The yellow trace is the difference between channel 1 and channel 2, and that difference is written to a file on the hard disk. And that file is now input to this instance of Time Lab. While the first instance here is measuring the signal from the tiny PFA. And since they have the same signal, two different ways, I should expect these curves to be identical. Now, as you can see, Timelab has some peculiarities uh, below about two seconds, and those are not present in the Allen deviation. I will wait for some fairly long time to see where this goes. When I came back in the morning, I was met by a black screen. Windows 10 had crashed, and I couldn't wake it up by use of the keyboard or the mouse or putting dongles into the USB or anything else. So I had to switch it off and switch it on again to get a reboot. And then I couldn't see what had happened. So I have instead uh, gone to Windows 7 because I, in the meantime, I had learned how to install a COM port, a virtual COM port on Windows 7, so I can run Timelab also on Windows 7. And then I recorded what you can see on the screen now, and I also found that Windows 10 is no longer visible from Windows 7 as it has been before. So Windows 10 has probably made an update and uh, failed somehow. Anyway, when I try to start Windows 10, it still works, and I can put files into the 
Windows 10 system from Debian 12. So I can put the Lindrad executable in the right place still without having to download it from the internet. Anyway, what I have seen after uh, about 10 hours uh, running under Windows 7 is interesting because uh, as soon as the first two seconds have elapsed or rather for tau below two seconds there is a big difference but above two seconds the curves look very similar and how similar they are I can find out by loading the uh, function from where is the mouse there I can load the team file uh, from Leanrod. It's this one on top of what I have from the tiny PFA. And you can see it is the same curve as it should be because the analog data is the same into the tiny PFA. PFA and into my two-channel receiver of Lindrod, where I don't uh, see the uh, frequency drift of the oscillator, which normally would be the test object, because I'm looking at the difference between the two channels. So this is good, and if I could wait, if I had the patience to wait a very long time, I would see a noise floor somewhere, maybe 10 to minus 14 or so, uh, I think there is a faster way of seeing where the actual noise floor is and if it's the same or if it is different between these two methods of making measurements. Anyway, uh, there are some problems with this. If I look at the frequency difference, it looks like this. And in the Linrod frequency difference here and I have selected the time the same in both traces it's the part from 4190 seconds up to 5200 seconds there is a discontinuity as you can see here it is at the same place also here And you can see the noise going up and down. That is the frequency instability uh, between my two local oscillators. Uh, it is determined by the time constant of the PLL. And you can see the waveform is the same here. And the discontinuity happens at the same time, the same point in time. And... It says one hour, one hour, 19 minutes for the tiny PFA. And it says, oh, it doesn't say anything here. Well, uh, but anyway, there is some little difference in the frequencies in the time scale, which I have to investigate. But it's a small discrepancy, and you can see the curve form is very much the same. But the uh, tiny PFA has a wide trace of noise around it, which I don't see in the Linrod. I can select some little section here where the noise is reasonably flat. I can go from here to here and it looks like that and I can take the same region here and it looks like this and it should be still the same function and it's hard to see because here is this uh, rather high frequency uh, oscillations I can pick a small section of it, as 
something like this. And the same here. And there is a similarity, but here the magnitude is much higher. And I don't know the reason for this. The Allen deviation uh, below tau equals one second is very sensitive to the settings of the Pine D BFA. I think it is about standard to have tau equals 0.1 second and decimation 5. So I am running short uh, sequences in with various settings, starting first with this. So it's a choir uh, and monitor. This will show what is coming from the tiny PFA. 2226 something. 222, two, two. well, that's down that 4 now. And of course, well, it's. So it is these numbers that come from here. And I start measurement. I have set it to run for 90 seconds only. And here is 90 seconds. I run it once more to see reproducibility. Below one second the curves are identical. Uh, up to 10 seconds there are some differences, but if I look at the error bars here, you can see it is well within the error limits. I now change decimation. I don't know exactly what it's doing, but I know that it has a distinct effect. Oh, I have to run monitor to make it easier to change things. And it says 0.1 second, that's okay. Start measurement. And it looks very different. Nearly one order of magnitude at 0.1 second. I removed the error bars. They are making the figure a bit too ugly. Well, it is a little bit higher at 10 seconds, but it's well within error bars. I make another measurement to see if that is reproducible or not. Well, it really looks like the Allen deviation has changed at 10 seconds. Maybe, maybe not. I think I have to run for significantly longer times to make the error bars smaller to see whether or not the change from decimation 5 to decimation 1 really makes a difference at 10 seconds or larger times. So now I am collecting tau.1 and decimation 2 and it will take 15 minutes. Well, it seems decimation 2 gives the same result as decimation 5 when it comes to longer values for tau. But it's much better at shorter taus. Now I will repeat the decimation 1 to see that it is really reproducible. Because I am measuring noise, the frequency difference between two oscillators which are phase locked. And I don't know whether the statistics of that uh, obeys the s standard rules that define the uh, variation error bars. 
It seems significant that the red trace is above the green and the blue, but I will verify that. Statistics is difficult. Uh, the trace, the red one that is much higher on the Allen deviation, uh, is not reproduced when I do the same measurement once more. So I eliminate that one. Uh, close selected and lose data. And here is now what I see. The decimation doesn't affect the result at 10 seconds, presumably, but it does have a significant effect below tau one second. So uh, there is one more factor to analyze, and that is what happens if I make a different tau in the tiny PFA. 0.2 seconds for tau and decimation 1 gives this red trace and maybe it is significantly higher than the other three I have so I repeat this measurement well this time tau 0.2 seconds and decimation 1 comes where the other traces were so this first the attempt to get it, the dark red trace, is not similar to what I got this second time. So I just delete that. And this is of course uh, questionable. Delete. But now all are similar from one second up to ten seconds but they differ significantly below one second. I have measured now with a tau of 0.2 seconds and then I can see the black trace is with decimation 2 and the red is with decimation 1 and 1 is better than 2. Here is tau equals 1 uh, decimation 5 uh, 2 and 1. And it seems uh, I should go for even longer tau because uh, these values are absolutely of no meaning, uh, at least when we are looking at good oscillators. Uh, looking at the rubidium oscillators, then the noise is very high, so then these artifacts do not matter really. I want tau to go even in one second, so the next I can try is 0.25 seconds. Starting, it comes down here. It will probably drift upwards after a while, but I will wait now again 15 minutes. I have added <coughs> measurements with tau equals 0.25 and decimation 1 and 2. And the best is decimation 1, it's the brown trace here, and it is almost a straight line down to 0.25. And if I take decimation 2, it is here, it is a little bit more noisy. I can have a look at the measurement of frequency difference. And here you can see that this brown, the big structures, that is not normal. Uh, <clears throat> so if I repeat that measurement, it will probably come out better, because this is a real signal. But the important thing that I want to look at now is what happens uh, below one second. So I can select this region where I have all traces uh, relatively close to each other. 
and here we can see uh, decimation 5 and 0.1 second it is this blue which gives a very strong signal at uh, tau equals 0.1 and then comparing the curves this one it is 0.2 tau is 0.2 and decimation is 2 and the other one which is probably best it's the pro the brown trace 0.25 and decimation 1 and that's the one which had some funny phenomenon uh, <coughs> that is probably not there if I repeat this measurement so I will do that now I'm collecting again tau equals 0.25 seconds and decimation 1 and that's the red trace and this time I will run it for one hour one hour measurements one is with 0.25 for tau and decimation 1 and the other 0.1 second for tau and decimation 5 that's the blue trace and the red trace and the red trace coincides with the trace as I took just recently with 0.25 for tau you can see the start at 0.25 now I made a long time measurement previously and I will load that uh, tim file linrad.tim I think it was this one open And as you can see, it coincides with the previous measurement. I also made the same measurement with a tiny PFA. And open, that's better. And we can see exactly the same noise here below one second. And it coincides with the latest curve so obviously setting tau 2.25 produces a higher value for Allen deviation at about 70 seconds I don't understand what this means but it is a phenomenon that I observe I can compare uh, modified Allen variation and the differences are the same but here it is much better because that uh, high frequency oscillation on the frequency is attenuated by the modified deviation I can look at Hadamard and that is the difference here is the same in Linrad there is a file options.h here I can set these definitions and I have set Allen file channel 1 and Allen file channel 2 false and Allen file diff true so I don't write all three files anymore that's to mi minimize the risk that the file system gets overloaded two hours and six minutes have elapsed something is wrong with the time scale although the curves look perfectly right well as it turns out I had set the time of measurement to one hour for the tiny PFA while I had set 10 days for the Linrod signal anyway the result I see is very similar up to 900 seconds uh, the magenta trace is the old recording I made early in this video it extends for a long time and is very similar with uh, it was with 0.1 second for tau now I am using 0.25 seconds uh, 0.25 seconds and decimation 1 and that gives the blue curve 
and it is very similar to the blue curve I have here and which goes a little bit further because I didn't limit the time it's two hours and here it's only one hour but these curves are very similar uh, so uh, all looks fine and it seems that the optimum setting for the tiny PFA is like this 0.25 seconds and decimation 1 what remains to study I think I have found I think I have found now the optimum setting to study the first part of the curve from 0.25 seconds up to a couple of seconds because I see that the blue trace is very similar here and here and the hardware used is very different and both weights go into the uh, time lab and give the same result while doing this measurement I observed something odd and I made a screen dump from that which you can see here and what I can see is there is a jump in the frequency in channel 1 the green trace and of course the frequency difference makes a jump also and when I look in the tiny PFA I see exactly the same thing so there is an instability in my local oscillator 1 it doesn't happen often but I guess it has happened now and then uh, I don't know what it is yet I will look for it well here is a problem I have touched the connectors for the DC supply to the channel 1 oscillator and uh, something is not good there the oscillator and the amplifiers for channel 1 are supplied with 16 volts from this capacitor and some other capacitors and I'm using 4 millimeter banana plugs and I did like this and uh, that causes variations in the contact resistance presumably whether that has been the cause of the problem I have seen I don't know so what you saw that I did get gave me this result and whether that happens spontaneously or not I cannot judge I have cleaned the 4 mm banana female with isopropylic alcohol and I have also squeezed it to make a harder uh, pressure, contact pressure. And I have arranged for oscillator number 1 to have its own female banana plug here and the other things which are far less critical go on the other one here. I have also found where I made a mistake that explains why I had a factor square root 2 uh, larger values in Linrod with the Allen deviation and I have corrected the Hadamard variation as well but I didn't really look what was the mistake I just changed by a factor square root 2 in hopefully the correct direction I will verify that later on uh, because now I am going to collect uh, data for quite some time in Lindrad as well as with the tiny PFA using decimation 1 and 0.25 seconds for uh, the minimum tau and I have 0.1 second for minimum tau in Lindrad because there is no disadvantage with that and I can look at what is the reading here uh, at 10 seconds and it is the green trace channel 1 <coughs> it says 1.96 times 10 to minus 12 and if I look at the tiny PFA it says 1.98 times 10 to minus 12 that's almost perfect in agreement I check 100 seconds it says 8.67 and here I see 
8.68. So the hardware are completely independent, but both look at the same uh, signal, comparing my channel 1 oscillator with the extra oscillator, the test object I have. One very interesting thing is that the green curve and the gray red curve are almost the same at 0.1 second. Before the red was clearly better than the green here at very short times. So it seems the channel 1 oscillator has improved. And when I measure on the tiny uh, the island deviation and compare with the old values here is what I see so these are the old values that were a square root 2 below the old Linrad values but now Linrad and Tiny get the same result and significant, significantly better than what I had before the ratio goes from 1.40, seems like square root 2, but it increases and has a maximum at about 100 seconds, where it is 1.63. And then it goes down, and at 2000 seconds it's only 1.19. Although here statistics is not so good, so this could be almost anything. Linrad has been running for 12 hours and 21 minutes now and suddenly I see a jump in the frequency of channel 1. So there is still a problem somewhere. Well, uh, the change of mode between save and clear for the correlation the yellow trace that was uh, after six hours. So the width of the trace is how the trace has varied for the second half of the entire measurement. So I can clear to see where the trace is. So I click on this box again. And I can read out the values at 20 or even 20.69 hertz. I see 2.5 times 10 to minus 12 for the correlation. 3.81 for the green trace. Uh, now the yellow trace should be this test oscillator only while the green dots is the sum of the Allen deviation for the channel 1 oscillator and that test oscillator. And since they should be independent, they should add as the square root of the sum of squares. So having 3.81 and 2.50, I can compute the uh, Allen deviation of the channel 1 oscillator only. This gives me that the Allen deviation of my channel 1 oscillator at 20 seconds is 2.88. Uh, so that means that uh, it is just a little worse than the test oscillator that was 2.5. Now uh, accuracy isn't really good enough for me to be able to say that one is better than the other. But in principle, if I would wait another day or two, I could say this more precisely. Still, I know that there is a problem. This uh, jump in frequency, about 0.2 millihertz. It may have happened several times, and that will contribute to the Allen deviation of all times, because this is a, this is a jump in frequency. When I found that optimum settings were decimate 1 and 0.25 seconds for the minimum tau, that was with a frequency difference between the two signals that was very small. 
the frequency difference between my two local oscillators that are phase locked to each other but with a long time constant. Now when I measured my other oscillator uh, the frequency difference is about 27 Hz and then I get ugly results below 5 seconds or so regardless of what parameters I set. I can zoom a little bit so it is easier to see perhaps. Two measurements at 0.25 seconds for tau and two is with 0.1 second. And they have decimate one and decimate five. The decimation doesn't make any difference nearly. The curves are very close together but the uh, minimum tau makes a very different uh, pattern but the error are about the same so it jumps up and down and somewhere in between one could guess that the real signal is but that's not true it is much lower so I don't know what is the optimum setting in each particular case and I don't really know how the inner workings are of the tiny PFA. Here are two of the files I made with the tiny PFA with 0.1 second and 0.25 seconds. And the green curve here is produced by a live file from Linrad which has a similar behavior. It goes down a little and then up. It is the green dots I'm looking at channel 1 oscillator and I set Linrod to have 0.05 seconds so there are some more points it is going up towards shorter times I have connected a rubidium oscillator the noise the phase noise is very high at 10 Hertz offset it is at minus 95 dBc per Hertz and at 50 Hertz offset here it's about minus 120. Uh, I have also measured at the same time with the same settings on the tiny PFA and it's the green trace here. You can see the noise level is so high that we don't see the artifacts of the T PFA. But at about 10 seconds that means 0.1 Hertz offset then the curve bends upwards because here we see the noise of my test oscillator, the channel 1 oscillator, which is the other signal into the tiny PFA. I can try to change the measurement from Allen deviation to modified Allen deviation. And we see the curve goes down a little bit uh, for the this noise that is close to the carrier but it goes down much more for these artifacts and here if I go back to Allen the difference is small after five and a half hours five minutes 36 minutes there five hours 29 minutes and this one not quite as long, 4 hours 52 minutes. Anyway, a long time. I have uh, the result from the rubidium oscillator. It looks very much the same here and here. This is the tiny PFA and this is uh, the Linrod sending the frequency data that you can see here. And 0.05 seconds. That's the setting here. What is interesting is to see the straight line going all the way down to 20 seconds, then bending slightly and severely bent at 40 seconds. This is the time constant of my uh, phase locking loop, and at 200 seconds. Uh, the two oscillators are nearly the same frequency and higher than that they behave as if there was just a single oscillator. 
The value I see at 20 seconds, where the correlation is still accurate, is 2.59 times 10 to minus 12. Here is the Allen deviation I found in the beginning of this video when two uh, rubidium oscillators were run it with the tiny PFA. And as you see, it is a straight line all the way from when it started, it was 0.1 second, and down to here, which is 700 seconds. So uh, 20 th seconds, it's here on the middle of the very straight line. The value I had was 4.09, an equal contribution from the two oscillators, which I know isn't actually quite true, but it is reasonably correct. So the square root of 4.09 is 2.89, and what I found was 2.59. And at 40 seconds I expect 2.04 from this study. That would be where the mouse crosses and it is an extension of this straight line. Not quite, but nearly. And I guess the reason is that the two rubidium oscillators are not exactly the same. I have saved this Alan deviation plot as a TIM file and I open it here. Uh, it is this one. And have a look how it develops over time. So the information differs just a little here, but statistically I'm not quite sure because the total time for this 2 hours 51 minutes it has been running for half the time as compared to the green curve. So it could might could perfectly well come much closer. Anyway, at short times they are very close to each other. When I look at modified Allen deviation here, I see something very odd. The green trace, which is the rubidium measurement that I made with the tiny PFA, it has degraded while the other curves have improved. And I transfer both curves into here so I can check and it's the same. And I said that this has degraded, that was not quite right. It has not changed. This is part of the measurement of the rubidium oscillator with the data from Linrod below and the data from tiny PFA above. And we can see some little phenomena like here and correspondingly here. It looks a little bit different and certainly uh, it looks more noisy here in Linrod than here, although uh, I'm not really sure on that. I can apply a narrower filter in the baseband in Linrod. Right now the bandwidth is about 50 Hz because I have to avoid this spur which is the second harmonic of the strong signal at 27 Hz and I have to avoid the zero frequency which is here and the signal is of course right between. Uh, first I expand one step like that it makes things a little slower because the transform is larger. Maybe even one more time. And then I reduce the filter bandwidth. And I can use the ratio factor instead. Maybe 40. And now there is a really narrow filter. So to <clears throat> be able to see better, I can expand here the scale. And now I have to click on top of the signal to have it moved to the center of the filter. 
and now it waits for a while because buffers are large and Linra <coughs> does not want. You can see here, by the way, how the noisy signal has become less noisy and now not noisy at all. And now it is collecting data at a filter bandwidth of uh, about 1 hertz. And that should change the uh, Allen deviation because we don't have this high frequency movements anymore. And you see how the frequencies are correlated now. So these are variations in channel 1 or in the rubidium oscillator. And I have to click here. Here you can see that the signals are very well correlated and drifting very slowly. So I think this is the rubidium noise we can see here. Anyway, uh, I clear here and start saving on the ASCII file. That's Alt S and I give it the 9X. And then I can start uh, acquire from uh, live ASCII file X channel 1 open and I haven't changed anything so I start measurement here and then I do the same for the tiny PFA uh, acquire from counter in talk only mode and start measurement and of course the tiny PFA is doing the same as it did before. I haven't changed anything for that. But here, when uh, TimeLab gets the data from Linrod, of course, uh, it doesn't have any variations at 0.1 second because they won't pass through the filter. All the stuff you see up here uh, comes outside the filter. So it doesn't contribute here. So this is a form of uh, modified Allan deviation where uh, noise close to the carrier is removed. And the interesting thing is that uh, it has an effect also at longer times. That noise contributes to the Allan deviation also at times of several seconds. I finished this video by looking at the uh, phase noise that I can see now. Uh, there was a problem with the DC supply to channel 1 which I have corrected. So I expected it to look better now than what I have been usually seeing. And that's correct at very close spacings. Uh, the result I have for my oscillator is minus 83 dBc per hertz at 0.1 hertz and at 1 hertz I see minus 123 and at 10 hertz it's about uh, minus 150 from here 152 but there is something wrong with channel 1 this curve does not look normal. It looks there has been an event in channel 1. And I have seen that during the Allen uh, variation measurements also. Sometimes the frequency jumps. Now the collection of correlation uh, here uh, looks for odd events and skips the collection of uh, correlation spectra. So there has been something over many hours. This has been running for 10 hours and 42 minutes. I have restarted the phase noise measurement. It has been running for one and a half hour now. 94 averages on the uh, average correlation, on the correlation here. Uh, 
at 1 hertz I still see minus 123, but at 0.1 hertz it is now minus 79. And that is a significant difference, so there is an instability in the test object, my oscillator, which I have problems with, that is known. The correlation uh, imaginary part here, the red dots, it is far enough below, so I know that this is really a property of the oscillator I'm measuring. And I can see here, uh, this doesn't look quite normal. Here has been an event that was in the previous measurements, but the noise doesn't look quite like a random noise. So, uh, the channel 1, which here looks perfectly normal, had a problem, probably a frequency jump during the previous measurement. And frequency jumps I have seen once also in the Allen uh, variation measurements. So, an intermittent error that happens every uh, couple of hours, or even less frequently than that, will be very hard to find. I don't know how to manage this.